Hello. I saw a program on television last night that I must tell you about. It was about the situation of the black community in America since the 1960s. Now, I know that their situation was not enviable, but I never thought until yesterday that it was so horrible. Listen, I learned that in the mid-1960s, the southern states of America were still very racist. But what does it mean to be racist? Well, you know that in the 17th century, blacks were captured in Africa and sent to America as slaves. And ever since this sinister period, they have been considered as second-class citizens. This continued into the 20th century, when laws against the blacks were enacted. These segregationist laws forbade the blacks to vote, to attend the same schools as whites, and even to sit in the same seats as whites on a bus. In fact, the front four rows of the bus were reserved for the whites, and the blacks had to sit at the back. Now, they could sit in the middle section of the bus if the seats were available. But if a white man needed a seat occupied by a black, then the latter had to get up and move to the back of the bus. So, as you can see, racism was not only in people's minds, it was part of the American legal system. How could a society that had brought the world so many clever and respected men and women, that was in advance for its time, don't forget, they were about to travel to the moon. How could they be so backwards over such a thing as skin colour? Most Americans in the mid-60s were not tolerant or open-minded at all. In fact, they were overly prejudiced. The fact is that in the mid-50s and 60s, being black in America meant being confronted daily with humiliation again and again. They couldn't use the same water fountains as the whites, and their children had to walk to school as they were forbidden to use the school buses. And segregation reigned in all public places. And it was at this time that a feeling of resistance began to take shape. Certainly, the blacks considered that this situation had gone on for long enough, and that something had to change soon before it was too late. And resistance began. Most of the time, the resistance offered to the whites was isolated and always passive. Actions like those of the famous baseball player Jackie Robinson, who refused to give up his seat to an army officer. Or the schoolgirl Claudette Colvin, who was arrested, handcuffed and expelled from a bus for the same reason. But the most famous resistance that history remembers was Rosa Parks's no to a bus driver who asked her to get up and leave the seats reserved for the whites. And Martin Luther King's boycott of the city bus line that lasted for 381 days and caused the bus company to lose a huge amount of money. It was very prejudicial towards them, as 75% of its users were blacks. On the 13th of November, 1956, the Supreme Court of America 
declared that segregation on the buses was unconstitutional. And the bus boycott ceased soon afterwards. Yet, violence against the blacks did not stop that day. And maybe because of Rosa Parks's and Martin Luther King's victory, it even intensified. The Ku Klux Klan. I'm sure you have already heard of the Ku Klux Klan. But do you know exactly who they are? The Ku Klux Klan is a xenophobic and violent secret organization that was founded in 1866 to prevent the black community integrating American society. It emerged just after the Civil War, when black slavery in America was abolished. To understand what the KKK is about, we can compare them to the extremist skinhead movements today, who have very similar ideas to those of the KKK in America. The members of the Ku Klux Klan wear long white robes and white hoods covering their face. At first, they told the blacks that they were ghosts of Confederate soldiers willing to take revenge. They tortured, whipped, hanged and burnt. And their victims were always blacks or white sympathizers who stood up for them and the federal government. Rosa Parks remembers that when she was young, her grandfather stood guard outside their farmhouse against the violent acts of the Klan, and that once her school was burnt to the ground by the Klan. Then the Klan added other enemies to its list. Jews, Catholics, homosexuals. Since the 1970s, the Klan has considered all these groups as being responsible for every evil in the US. Since the early 2000s, many immigrants have arrived in America and have been in direct competition with lower and working class workers. This has created a feeling of anxiety and fear in the minds of many Americans and the Klan has taken advantage of this for propaganda and recruitment purposes. We suppose that the number of Klan members has severely been reduced since the start of the 20th century, when being a member was considered as an act of patriotism. Indeed, we hope that the numbers have been reduced. We think that today there are between 5,000 and 8,000 members in small groups around America. But one thing is certain. Today, the life of the black community in America has greatly improved since the start of the 20th century. Well, hope you learned something new again today. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.